Hello friends, I'm Michael, and I'm going to be discussing how to use the MAD model kit. Note that it is in beta, so many things could be changed. So, what is it? MMK is a system I developed that allows you to export rigged and animated 3D models from Blender and import them directly into Game Maker. Since the system does not depend on any converter programs, workflow and iteration is very simple and fast. The system provides a simple way to load and animate 3D models across platforms within Game Maker with relatively few functions. Each model supports multiple meshes, armatures, and animations. Animations can be blended with each other to create smooth transitions. MMK then uses shaders to skin the meshes, which, when combined with the material system, creates some incredible possibilities. For this demo, I am using a modified version of the Getting Started with 3D tutorial project that I made, linked below. In the master control object, I've reversed the call order. I've modified the camera update script so the camera is close to the center of the room and positive Z is up now. The plane builder object has also been modified. It now no longer draws a plane automatically, no longer builds the plane, and also has a step event added. We'll be using this object as a base for the implementation of MMK. This is what the project currently looks like with these updated settings. After importing extension, you should have the following resources. Two template shaders, MMK ES skin, the GLSL ES shader to drive the meshes, and MMK HLSL skin, which is specifically for DirectX 11 targets. You should also have the advanced model export Python script to import into Blender to enable the export, as well as the Mad Model Kit extension, which contains all the important functions to actually drive the models. If you have all this, we can get started with what you need in Blender. Here we have a top hat person. They have a texture, mesh, and animated armature. Here's the animation we'll be testing. To export, install the script from earlier and navigate to File, Export, Game Maker Studio 2 Enhanced 3D Model. Make sure all the meshes and armatures you wish to export are currently selected. Each of these many settings have helpful tooltips to tell you what they do, but in our specific case I'm going to go through it quickly and enable what I need. I need advanced export because I want armatures and animations. I need the scale to be 32 in order to fit one blender unit to 32 pixels in Game Maker. I don't need to export normals, but I do want to export animations, and I want to select actions. After we've selected our settings, we can now export enhanced GMS2 model, and we're done. Now we can get started on the GML side. Once you've exported your model, you'll want to add it as an included file. As you can see, I've already done this. I've also imported the texture that we saw in Blender. All the settings are default as the system automatically handles UV correction by default. To begin with, we want to navigate to the create event of the plane builder. We're going to begin by loading the model. We can do this with the MMK model load function. We simply pass in the file path to the model as a string, in this case, model test.mmod. Alternatively, you can pass a buffer index instead of a file path. This is essential for when you're using HTML5 as you must use buffer load async to load the model instead. There are also a series of import options that you can enable. There is the HLSL option, which enables the use of blend semantics in HLSL shaders. This does, however, leave the model incompatible with GLSL ES shaders as they do not support the blend semantics. There is also the no freeze option, which disables vertex buffer freezing on import. This doesn't have a whole lot of use yet, but there is an upcoming feature which may benefit from this. For our specific case, we need neither of these. After loading a model, it's also important to understand how to destroy them when you're finished with them to free up memory. This is simply done with MMK model destroy. Of course, right now, that's not very useful in our test project. As a side note, there is the MMK model get mesh function, which is used to get the vertex buffer generated for each mesh in a model. We'll not be using it in this project, but it has many uses. The next thing we'll want to do is create an armature instance. We do this using the model instantiate armature function. This function returns an armature that we can use to animate our meshes. It takes two arguments, the model and an optional armature name. If no armature name is passed, then it will just use the first one it finds. As we only have one armature in our model, we do not need to pass the armature name. When we are finished with an armature, we must destroy it using MMK armature destroy. 
all armatures created must be destroyed before the model is destroyed, otherwise you could have some very in unintended behavior. Now that we've done that, we can actually already draw the armature. If we go to the draw event of our plane builder, we just add MMK armature draw. And add our armature we created earlier. Now when we run the project, we should have the top pat person in T pose in the center of the room. And as you can see, we have the top hat person colored white in T pose in the center of the room. The next thing we want to do is apply our animation. The name of this animation was idle pose in Blender and it's important that we remember this. First, we get the animation with MMK model get animation. We pass the model and the animation name. We'll also want to keep track of the current frame of the animation we're on with a frame variable. We can get the actual frame speed for the game based on the current game speed using MMK animation get frames per game frame. And then we just pass the animation and it returns the number. Then in the step event, we will drive our animation. Firstly, we will make frame equal to the fraction of frame plus frame speed. This will make the animation loop as the animation functions use a frame in the range of zero to one instead of actual frame indexes to make blending between certain animations simpler. Now we can set the animation using MMK armature set animation. We pass our armature, we pass the animation ID, and we pass the frame. That should be it. Now when we run the project, he should be doing the idle pose. And as you can see, he's doing the idle pose at the same speed it was played in Blender. Now, he does look a little bland, so let's add a texture. Back in the create event, we'll assign the texture using MMK armature set texture. We pass the armature, and we want to get the texture of our sprite we loaded earlier. The sprite name is sprite dummy in this case, with an image index of zero. Now when we run the game, he should be textured. And as you can see, he's textured. The texture is all correct. These minor artifacts were from the texture itself and you could see them in Blender. So they're not actually an error of the system. <laughs> they're just an error of me not being very good at texturing. So while texturing an entire armature is good, you can actually expand on this with MMK armature mesh set texture, which enables you to set textures per mesh included in the armature based on the meshes you can get using MMK model get mesh. On top of this, we can expand on this system with MMK armature set material script. This is an interesting system that allows rudimentary materials using game maker's own scripts and custom shaders. I'm actually going to go through making a simple material in this video. For this case, I'm going to make a material that enables me to blend the color by any color I choose. In order to do this, we first want to create a script. This script will be, in this case, called test material. All materials, when they are loaded, are passed two arguments. They are passed a list of arguments that you created when you assign the material script, and whether or not the system needs a full refresh. We can store these arguments with var args equals argument zero, which is an array of arguments that you passed earlier, and var needs full update as argument one. Needs full update is only true when the shader needs to be correctly reset within the material, as well as any static variables. Args are per mesh, whereas the needs full update is for stuff that should be globally fixed. So in, what we need to do is we need to assign a shader, and we'll need to make a shader. In this case, we are going to make a duplicate of MMK ES skin, and I encourage you to make your own materials and shaders and share them, because the more there are, the better the system can be. So I'm going to call it blend. We don't need to worry too much about the vertex shader, but in the fragment shader, I'm going to add a uniform that allows me to pass a blend color. We will simply pass it in and multiply the output color with blend color. And that's the shader done. Now in the test material, we need to now use if needs full update, we set the shader. And 
for all materials, we must return the shader index so that it can update the bone matrices correctly. Now we can pass our uniform. In this case, I'm going to be passing all the arguments as an array to make life simpler. And that's technically the material done. Now we need to assign the material. So we go back here and we go to MMK, Armature Set Material Script. And we want to assign Test Material. And I want to blend its color with red. So we will go 1, 0, 0, 1, based on how the shader was built. And now when we run it, it should be precisely the same, but blended red. And there you have it. It works perfectly. We can also expand this example by blending it with green if we want. And there you have it. It simply works. A nice simple way to modify the properties of individual meshes on an armature without too much hassle. The set material script also has a version specifically for meshes. So that's basically how to use the system. I've got most on the way too. There are some other functions I've not yet covered, but they are more case specific. These include armature set mesh enable, which allow you to add extra meshes to an armature or disable meshes already on the armature. There are get transform functions that are used to get bone transforms of armatures so you can bind different objects to different bones if you want. For example, a helmet to a head, a sword to a hand. There are also list functions that are used to list the names of bones, animations, meshes, and armatures associated with armatures and models in order to help you see what's already there and load names dynamically. In an upcoming release, I'm also going to be working on native extensions to make the system run faster on non-YoYo compiler target. So that's about all there is to it. If you have any feedback or suggestions, let me know. If you find any bugs, tell me. I'd love to get this as stable as possible. Remember though, I encourage you to edit shaders, create new ones, and create materials and share them with the world. The more we have, the better the system can be. When the system reaches the full release, I'm also going to release written documentation. Okay, thank you, and bye. Thank you.